Now, multi-index notation, though a little bit intimidating, is so useful when you've got a function with a lot of input variables. So let's dive into the notation in the setting where we have n variables, x1, x2, all the way up through xn, then a multi-index for this is going to be i1, i2, all the way up through in, a sequence of indices, of non-negative integers, call that capital I. We're going to say that the degree of that multi-index I is denoted with uh, absolute value signs, and it's equal to the sum of the component indices, I1 plus I2, all the way up through plus IN. Now, the first term in the Taylor series formula we're gonna, we're gonna analyze is that monomial term, X to the I. We're going to use that multi-index as a power. Uh, how does this work? Given our variables, X1 all the way up through XN in that order, and a corresponding multi-index, I, then we're going to say that x to the i is really x1 to the i1 times x2 to the i2, all the way up through xn to the i, and that's the ith power of x. That's what that term in the Taylor series formula really means. Now, the degree of that monomial term is simply the degree of the multi-index, the sum of the component indices. Let's take a look at some examples of multi-index monomials. Let's say that x has just three variables, and instead of subscripts, let's just call them x, y, and z for clarity. Then, in this case, what is x to the 1, 2, 3? Well, that's x to the 1, y to the 2, z to the 3. That's x, y squared, z cubed. Okay, what's x to the 0, 1, 0? Well, remember, what does it mean to take something to the zeroth power? that variable just goes to 1. So uh, x to the 0, y to the 1, z to the 0 is simply y. That's, that's really clean. Likewise, x to the 1, 0, 1 turns out to be simply x times z. And what is x to the 0, 0, 0? Well, you can figure that one out. That's not hard. That's simply equal to 1. Okay, let's say that instead of three variables, we have four. Let's call them A, B, C, D. Why not? Then this is not going to be any more difficult. What is X to the 1, 2, 3, 1? Well, that's simply A, B squared, C cubed, D, all multiplied together. X to the 0, 1, 1, 1. Well, you can figure that out. That's just uh, B times C times D. X to the 1, 0, 0, 0 is simply A. And again, X to the, the everything is 0 is just 1. Now, what are the degrees of these? Can you figure that out? Linear terms have degree 1. Quadratic terms have multi-index degree 2, etc., etc. That works really nicely. Okay, let's keep going. What else can we do with this? Let's look at that factorial term. We divide these terms by i factorial. What, what is that? What does that mean? Well, here's the definition. Given a multi-index i, i1 up through i sub n, then how do we define the factorial of this? We're going to say that it is the product of the individual factorials. i1 factorial times i2 factorial all the way up through i n factorial. Okay, does this, um, does this make sense? Yeah, that's, that's really the right way to do it. That's what we're going to be dividing by in this Taylor series formula. As an example, let's say we have 1, 2, 3 factorial. What's that? That's 1 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial. That's 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, good. What about uh, 2, 2, 2 factorial? Be careful. This is not the same as 6 factorial. It's really 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. That's equal to 8. And 0, 0, 0 factorial is, of course, remembering that 0 factorial is 1, equal to 1. And, and that is really the reason for why this multi-index factorial is this way. We definitely want 0 factorial to be equal to 1 in order to make the formulae work out nicely.